Good afternoon. The Christian life was never meant to be burdensome, and it certainly was not meant to be lived in one's own strength or by one's own power or willpower. Let's look at what Jesus says about walking with him in this Christian life. Looking today at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and following. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. In this particular passage, we find three aspects of living the Christian life and having the joy that the Christian life gives to us, that abiding in Christ gives to us. Foundational to the Christian life is relationship. Notice what Jesus says, come to me. Notice he says, to me, not to a doctrine or a set of rules. In fact, he was speaking to people who were smothering under uh, a set of rules. He says, come to me, all you who are weary. And the word means that they're burned out, that they're absolutely weary from the heavy burden that they've been carrying and the ones that Jesus was talking to are those who were being taught by the Pharisees especially that you have to keep these 613 different laws uh, three and 360 365 of those were negative and 248 were positive so that kind of gives you the uh, the idea of what was going on Somehow we would earn our way to God. Jesus says, come to me. So first of all, in foundation of the Christian life, it's not religion. It's a relationship. It's a vital, vibrant, lively relationship with Christ who wants to reveal himself to us. The Christian life, then, is characterized by rest. Notice what Jesus says, Come to me, all that are weary and burdened down, and I will give you rest. In fact, he says it twice. I will give you rest. The word means refreshing. It means you can exhale, you can breathe again, as it were. And when he's talking about that rest, first of all, there's a rest from our guilt. Because in Jesus, we have forgiveness from our sins. We are not under the burden of guilt anymore. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's what Paul writes in Romans, the eighth chapter in the first verse. So, we have that rest, and the writer of Hebrews says that we who have believed have entered into that rest. Yes, it's not the complete rest that we're going to enjoy, the complete shalom, the complete wholeness and harmony that is coming when Jesus comes again and we will be with him for eternity. But it is that foretaste. It is that... Ah, we can finally relax. We can finally rest, not only from the guilt of our sins, but in the acceptance. We are accepted in Christ. And oh, what a Savior. Because he describes himself as one who is meek and lowly of heart. Meekness does not mean weakness. If you think that Jesus is weak, just go back up to the 
20th verse in the chapter that we read today, the 11th chapter of Matthew, and you'll find there is no meekness there in the sense that he says, Woe to you, Chorazin, and doom to you, Bethsaida. And he brings judgment because the people will not repent. But for those who will believe in him, will discover this tenderness, this meekness, its strength that is under control. And so we can come to him, the God who made heaven and earth, and he comes to us and he is meek and lowly in heart. And oh, how restful that is to rest our lives in him, which brings us to the third point today, the means by which we maintain this rest. Now, I'm not talking about the means by which we maintain our salvation. Jesus keeps us by his power. But we abide in his love. We keep in step with the Spirit, and that's reliance. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Talking about discipleship. In fact, the word when he says to learn of me is the word, it's the verb from which we get disciple. And he says, take my yoke. And it has the connotation of being a learner, not in the sense, the Western sense that we think about sitting down and the teacher teaching us, but it means to live with him, to keep company with him, to do life together with him. In the time of Jesus, the way they trained an untrained ox to plow the field is they would take a veteran ox, if you would, they would put the veteran ox in the yoke, it's a double yoke, and put the untrained ox in the other side of the yoke. And of course, the untrained ox would try to go its own way. But the trained ox, the veteran ox, would actually keep going the way it knew and was trained to go. And eventually, the untrained one would get in step. And when Jesus is talking about his yoke is easy, he means that the yoke of discipleship is comfortable, that it fits. Now, the Christian life is not always comfortable, but it's that rest in knowing that Jesus is training us to walk and his yoke is easy and his burden is light because we're relying on him. He's the one in the other side of the in the other side of the yoke. And so he will lead us. He will teach us. It's life together with him. It's relationship. That's where rest comes from. As we rely upon him as we do life together with him. If we get out of step, he has means by which we know we're out of step and he gets us back in step. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I don't know why anybody wouldn't want this Christian life. It's not burdensome. It's not lived in our own strength. It never was meant to be lived in our, our own strength. Jesus says, come to me. It's relationship with him. It's following him. It's learning of him. It's knowing him. In the Hebrew sense, it's not knowing about him. It's knowing him experientially. And that's where the rest and that's where the joy of the Christian life is found. Have a wonderful day walking with Jesus. God bless you.